Uh, welcome to today's session on standards and specification. This is session 12, and the name of the subject is Fashion Material for Production Management for Merchandises. We're going to talk about standards and specification. These are the two pillars based on which any production house and any, any uh, other institution which gives uh, even services, uh, all such uh, organizations, they depend on these two pillars, standards and specifications. Standards are the benchmarks. And specifications are the detail. Like we say that God lies in detail. So without the details, you cannot do business. So essentially speaking, for international trade to happen, there has to be standards and there has to be specifications. Now let's uh, look at the objectives uh, for this session. Uh, first one is to know the organizations and the agencies involved in developing, assessing, and verifying product quality and performance. Uh, second is to understand standard documents. And third is to understand standard and specifications and their uses. Further, uh, the objective is to use appropriate information sources while developing standards and specifications. Now, to know the organization and agencies involved in developing, assessing, and verifying product quality and performance. Uh, a production has been happening since uh, many, many centuries, but of late since last uh, 150 uh, years, there have been organizations and agencies which have only been observing, looking at the way the industries work and how different industries and different companies, different manufacturing houses, how have they been able to maintain the quality or maybe improve the quality and their performance. Now, after having studied um, very many industries and organizations, these organizations and agencies, they developed, they assessed, and they verified the product quality and the performance. So their job is only to, 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 to develop and uh, assess and verify product quality and performance. They do not produce themselves. Just like NIFT, NIFT, uh, textile and uh, clothing manufacturing has been there, the markets have been there, it has been there since uh, ages. But then it was only until 1986 that NIFT came into being and NIFT is not into production, but NIFT is into the process of, uh, let's say, imparting education, which is related to various dimensions of uh, fashion, which is, you know, design, management and technology. So NIFT does not produce, but it documents everything. It develops, it assesses, and it verifies, let's say, uh, the uh, fashion education and, uh, and, and, and the evaluation of uh, the performance of uh, a fashion profession. Um, second objective is to understand the standard documents. So uh, there are do standard documents in, in, in every industry. So how to understand the standard documents? And third is to understand the standard and specifications and their uses. We're going to take uh, the examples of such kind of, uh, we're going to take examples of, you know, garments and uh, how various organization, how do they uh, set the standard and how do they specify, uh, specify about the garments to be made and what are the uses of uh, these standards and specification in the fashion industry. Uh, the fourth, uh, to use appropriate information sources while developing standards and specification. Now, uh, take an example of somebody who's, uh, uh, who's opening a factory uh, of garment manufacturing. How is that factory going to develop standards and specification? Now, it's, going, it's not going to happen in isolation. You cannot develop standards and specification on your own. You will have to study the, let's say, you have to study the industry, the way it has been working. And, and the best way is, you know, to, to get in touch with such organization agencies which are involved in uh, in, in, in uh, development and uh, assessing and, uh, you know, verification of uh, standards and specification. So, yeah, and, and, the, and the fifth objective is to understand the relationships uh, among uh, standards, specification and cost. Now, uh, uh, prima facie, uh, if the standard is very good, then the cost is going to be high. And if the budget is good, then the standard that you have to provide, that will also have, it has to be high. If you are very, very detailed and if you are very, very specific, in that case, you'll have to pay more. If you are not tolerant, if you are very, very specific, you'll have to pay more. Or if someone is paying you a lot, then you will also have to be very specific in your performance for the 
customer. Now, uh, let's look at uh, uh, the background of uh, this uh, standard specification. The first thing is that the you know, textile industry has many segments with many interests. So, there's someone who's growing cotton or, or viscose or uh, uh, viscose is not something which is grown. We, we grow the plants and from the plant we extract the, uh, the cellulose and then we make the viscose. So, there are people who are growing, growing plants. So, there are people who are, you know, rearing sheep uh, and, you know, sell the wool. So that is that is also part of the textile industry. And then there are people who are you know converting uh, fibers into yarns, then yarn into fabric, and then there are people who are dyeing and printing the fabrics. And then there are people who are you know converting fabrics into garments and things like that. There are also people who are just doing washing and dry cleaning. So they are also one of the segments of uh, textile industry. Now standards and specifications in the first place they were introduced to ensure supply of right quality goods now why do we have standards and specifications the standards and specification are there to ensure that if i tell you that this is what i want i am specifying that this is what i want and this is the standard that i am looking at you will have to give me that specification and you'll have to achieve that standard to satisfy me that is the uh, prime objective of standards and specification it helps us to source right quality goods it helps the manufacturer to make right quality goods so so after many uh, decades uh, when when the industries came into being as an offshoot professional trade organizations were formed to educate and communicate so so at any given point of time, there are some people who just observe, who, who collate the information, gather the information, put it in a very coherent and in a very logical manner. And then they start teaching the, the industry. So there's, the industry has been doing it, but they never looked at it uh, from an academic perspective or in a very structured format. Now that's what professional trade organizations, that's what they do. So the professional trade organizations were formed to educate and communicate uh, to the industry people. So these professional uh, organizations, what, what they did was they identified and defined the terms. So, so you get in touch with the, with the uh, major players in the industry and you talk to them and you understand the vocabulary. And then you identify. By way of that, you are able to identify and define the terms. You know, there are, there, there, every industry has its own vocabulary. So, so you look at the words, you identify the words, and you define them. What does it mean in the industry? The second, these organizations, they developed consistent practices within the field for describing and evaluating materials and processes. So the second important thing that these organizations did was they developed consistent practices, meaning to say that if you are cutting the fabric, then cutting has to be done in a particular way following a particular sequence. So the, these organizations, they developed consistent practices within the field for describing and evaluating materials and processes. So how, if you look at a material, how do you describe it and how do you evaluate it? So maybe it's it's a cotton fabric. So how do you describe it? You describe it in terms of you know, fiber, whether it's cotton or polyester. And then uh, how do you evaluate it? So let's say it is cotton. So you do a burn test or a physical or chemical test too, which will reveal whether it's cotton or not. That's one number one. Second evaluation is, the physical and chemical properties. First physical property is, you know, GSM, grams per square meter. How heavy is the fabric? And then, of course, you know, the, the, the count of the uh, yarn, the, the warp yarn and the weft yarn, and so on and so forth. So th th that's when we're talking about the materials. Processes is when we are talking about, let's say, cutting or washing, finishing or stitching, anything like that. So these organizations, they developed consistent practices within the field for describing and evaluating materials and processes. And these organizations, they encouraged fair trade practices and developed technological advances to maintain global competition. Now, the, our big thanks to these organizations because they encourage fair trade practices uh, to do things in a fair manner. Now, so why do we thank them? Because as customers, we are getting great products. We are getting get great products because the companies which are making these products, they do not engage in unfair trade practices. And they, because uh, there is competition between the various players, they develop themselves 
technologically and give us great products so because of these uh, you know organizations who are into you know training and development educating the industry people it led to fair trade practices and it also led to you know comparison between the organizations which led to uh, further competition and because of the competition the market started or the industry started giving great products to the uh, consumers now let's look at the standards and specifications uh, standards and specifications they help in sourcing right quality material that's what we talked about that the, the prime objective of standards and specification is it helps you to do, to to buy the right quality material and because you can uh, identify and find the right material it also helps you to choose which production method would be the best for that particular material and when you can get the right product and you can also decide on the right production method you will be successfully you will be able to fulfill the uh, needs of the target uh, group or the customers now let's let's look at those key organizers just like we said nift is in the in, in the uh, in the um, uh, you know in, 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 let's say in the business of imparting fashion education so similarly which are the organizations which are in the uh, in the business of developing standards and specifications so we have american association of textile chemists and colorists we have american society for testing of materials we have american society for quality we have american apparel manufacturers association we have tc2 which is textile clothing Te technology corporation we have ansi which is american national standards institute and we have international organization of standardization now if you talk about textile and clothing uh double et double c and astm they are very very important aama is important but a little less than double uh, et double c and astm and iso international organization of standardization it is the most important but it is not product or service specific it has nothing to it has nothing specific in relation to textile and clothing so whether you are a petrol pump or whether you are a restaurant or whether you are into textile and clothing iso is uh, relevant for you so iso is more uh, you know general and more holistic and therefore is relevant for all types of uh, organization not just textile and clothing. then there are some more organizations like nist which is national institute of standard and technology atmi which is american textile manufacturers institute atmi is against uh, has certain amount of uh, prominence is is of importance uh, and and then we have industrial fabrics association international and we have international fabric uh, fabric care institute so these are some of the major players but uh, wat double c and atmi and aama these are some of the major uh, organizations which are in the uh, business of uh, developing standards and specifications now let's see what does uh, how do we technically uh, define standards a standard is a set of characteristics or procedures that provide a basis for resource and production decision now a set of characteristics so let's say cotton now cotton is has a convoluted uh, structure uh, loops uh, a particular type when viewed under the microscope if you burn it it burns like paper and uh, you know uh, when you un when, when you undertake the physical and chemical tests it behaves in a particular manner so these are the set of characteristics which makes a product cotton if it is gold it would have a different set of characteristics and that's why we call it a gold so that is one standard now second is the procedures the procedures are those steps undertaken to do something so let's say cutting cutting can be done in five different ways or let's say making garments so garmenting can be done in millions of ways so when a product has been used uh, when a product has been made using a particular procedure that by that virtue that product is of a certain standard something which has been boiled for a certain amount of time 
and then it has been frozen for a certain amount of time just like milk milk is boiled to very high temperatures in a very short period of time and then suddenly it is cooled down and is frozen to very low temperatures in a very small amount of time that's called pasteurization so milk some is homogenized uh, and then are various uh, other types of uh, processes which can be uh, undertaken to uh, provide milk to the customers so it is a homogenized milk or it is a let's say pasteurized milk so these are two different standards of milk and the milk is different the standard of the milk is different because there are two different procedures which have been used to uh, get that quality of milk and whether it is cotton or whether it is a particular process these form the basis for resource and production decision meaning to say that when you know who is giving you what standard based on that you will decide from whom you are going to buy that is the basis for resource and second is when you know the quality of uh, when you know the standard of a of a raw material you can decide which production method you are going to use for that particular material and uh, a word of caution is that to start or enter a business one should know the industry standards otherwise you are going to look like a rookie someone who does not know the the rules of the industry the vocabulary of the industry and you would you would sound like an outsider so when you are entering business you should uh, do well to you know know the industry standards and we talked about standards now standardization is the process of setting the standards okay is the process of developing and applying rules for a consistent and uniform approach to a specific activity for the benefit and with the cooperation of all concerned it simply means that let's say all the people who are related to the fabric business with the cooperation of all these people who are related to fabric business what we are doing is we are developing and applying rules for a consistent and uniform approach so meaning to say that the entire fabric industry has uh, come together and decided that fabric will be sold in meters or yards not in terms of kilos now you go to buy vegetables so you can buy uh, potato you know in terms of kilos but in the same vegetable industry it does not give you banana in terms of kilos bananas are sold in terms of dozens so how was this approach developed so over a period of time this developed so when you are buying eggs it is in terms of dozens it is not in terms of kilos right and when you buy oil then it is not in terms of kilos it is in terms of liters so that is the process of developing and applying rules for a consistent and uniform approach so it's going to be consistent the entire industry you go to buy oil it's it will always be in terms of liters not in terms of kilogram now standards they describe characteristics of a product in a precise and consistent fashion you say it is 100% cotton uh, 40s poplin which is 40s uh, both in warp and weft and 100 gsm and uh, with a 42 inch width and with certain uh, let's say physical and chemical properties so that is a standard because standards they describe characteristics of a product in a precise and consistent fashion and standards describe minimum level of performance of safety now what we are saying over here is that uh, standard describe minimum level of performance it means if you are talking about a nylon cord or a nylon rope and when you say this is let's say a level standard nylon rope let's say a level means 500 kilo it means that that nylon rope can withstand or can hold at least 500 kg of weight that is the minimum that it can hold it may be able to hold more than 500 kg but the basic minimum that it can hold is at least 500 kilos if you say safety it means that let's say the airbags in the car so if it if the standard is let's say euro 1 standard uh, an automobile so if a car is of euro 1 standard and that euro 1 means that if uh, if that automobile if that car hits another thing 
at a velocity of let's say 100 uh, km per hour speed the airbags are going to get inflated and no one is going to get hurt uh, severely hurt and no one is going to die so that is the basic minimum safety that we are talking about when we are saying euro 1 standard in, uh, in in case of automobiles so when we are saying standards we are talking about the at least certain amount of performance that the product can give you so you can have a standard a b c d or a plus a double plus or you can have something like um, uh, standards can be in terms of 1 2 3 4 you know it's one uh, class one class two class three we, uh, that's uh, entirely up to you how do you handle the nomenclature but you know you, you don't say uh, best standard and you don't say you know average standard you say standard uh one or two or three or standard a b c or a a plus a double plus something like that and it describes minimum level of performance or safety so we have some very basic examples you know the traffic lights tulemon which is everywhere in the world the color the shape and the arrangement of the traffic lights is the same everywhere in the world it is standardized everywhere in the world and that is a standard now how do standards help one way is you know standards help you know in commercial communication different businesses in different countries they can talk to each other without any confusion example bar coding invoice count and construction pantone for color seams and stitches you know uh, ssa ssb you know superimposed seam seam a or b or lab uh, seam lsa lsb it is standard it is followed throughout the world no confusion anywhere same for the atm cards you take an sbi or a pnb or a union bank of india atm card you can use it anywhere in the world because of standardization standardization enhances production efficiency how you are producing only one kind of thing one standard and you do it again and again and again so by virtue of repetition because of familiarity you will be able to produce much faster and therefore you will be able to produce efficiently so example is economies of scale in production so because you have standards in production and you have explained that this is the standard that i want now the people who are producing they are going to do it again and again achieving that particular standard which you have told them they will do it again and again and over a period of time their speed of operation per unit is going to be very high and that's how you are able to achieve production efficiency now if you see identical parts are interchangeable uh, interchangeable among products uh, fairly simple example light bulb you take a 10 watt 20 watt 50 watt 100 watt 200 watt whatever bulb you take the holder the size of the holder is going to remain the same imagine what a nightmare it would be or what an irritant how much irritating would it be if you have to have a separate holder for different wattage of bulb similarly if you see any pepsi bottle 300 ml 200 ml 1 liter 2 liter all the pepsi bottles have the same bottle cap size all the sizes are the same further if we see standardization allows for enhanced competition as uh, discussed earlier because of standardization you will be able to compare different products and because you can compare different products you will be able to uh, gauge uh, why some product is more expensive some are lesser expensive or some products are value for money and some are not so great a deal because for a particular price the quality or the feature that uh, product is uh, offering is uh, not so much so until there is standardization you will not be able to compare so standardization means let's say we have apples so there are different types of apples and you can compare them but you can't be you cannot compare apples to oranges and oranges to let's say grapes or kiwi so until there is standardization now for example let's say if you look at uh, laptops how do you compare them you are able to compare them because 
there are uh, parameters for standardization as in in terms of let's say the number of pixels on the screen or in terms of uh, the random access memory the ram what is the speed how much is the memory space which it has uh, in its uh, in the, in the machine itself so those are the various parameters based on which we can compare them and these are all standards so ram is standard memory is standard you know the uh, uh, megapixel or the number of pixels in the on the screen those are all uh, uh, standards based on which you can uh, compare different uh, products and because of the comparison it leads to enhanced competition now since consumers can compare the products therefore competition is sharper and the companies have to work harder to satisfy the consumers which is good for consumers and of course standards are used to protect health and environmental quality and promote safety now uh, to take care of health and environmental quality and promote safety that is the prime responsibility of the government so uh, if there are any electrical uh, or electronic products then it has to have an isi mark or if it is coming from uh, the agricultural department from the agricultural industry then it it has to have an ag mark or if it is gold then it should have a hall mark so these are the standards used to protect health and uh, hallmark is not for health agmark is for health and uh, safety isi is for safety and environmental quality is you know iso 9001 that is related to environment environmental quality something which is or let's say three star or five star air conditioner which consumes lesser amount of energy and therefore good for the environment so these are the standards uh isi is one of them bis is another and and then there are uh, a host of other uh, such uh, 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 agencies or the marks which uh, illustrate or which uh, represent uh, the uh, you know something which is good for health or which is which has great environmental quality or something which is uh, safe for consumption now before we talk about um standardization we have to develop the standards now how do we uh, develop the standards now developing the standards has been uh, because of the combined effort of the producers suppliers manufacturers government agencies and the consumers so uh, all these people uh, you know the producer of the raw material like let's say cotton suppliers are the suppliers of let's say cotton cotton fiber and then manufacturers can be you know the yarn manufacturers the weavers and then there are government agencies like ministry of textiles and uh, textile committee and the handloom and handicraft uh, departments and then we have the uh, us which are the consumers now it is a combined effort of the these producers suppliers manufacturers etc who help in developing the standards now if you want to sell milk milk will be sold and now it, it can be cow milk or it can be buffalo milk now consumers they say no i i am going to only have cow milk i i don't want to have buffalo milk then the milk suppliers understand that you know i we will have to do separate packaging for cow milk and separate for buffalo milk now the consumer says listen i i i don't want i'm i'm obese i don't want toned i don't want you know uh, full cream milk i want toned milk then the suppliers understand that we will have there you know there are some people who want toned milk some want double toned milk and some want full cream milk so that's the role of consumers they dictate and accordingly the standards are uh, you know standards come into place and they get built they get developed now there are times when the producers they will say that you know we can only produce certain kind of cottons so then you have those kind of standards for cotton so that's why i say developing standards is that it uh, standards have developed uh, due to the combined effort of the producers and the suppliers the manufacturers the government agency and the consumers and the, the one of the example is jc penny's four point system now jc penny is a private organization it's a fashion brand now they created this four point system which was earlier first uh, introduced by the it was used by the american uh, army from that jc penny built its four point system now this four point system is has proved 
to be a very effective system for evaluating the quality of fabric and other raw materials and jc penny was the one to invent this but then today the entire textile and clothing industry uses the jc penny four point system for evaluating the quality of the fabric so jc penny four point system is a standard now standards reflect consensus of opinion about procedure application analysis etc so uh, let's say you are talking about milk how do you analyze milk so there there, there are various types of apparatus or there are different types of procedures which can be used to analyze the quality of the milk there are different processes which can be used to produce garment uh, and one process may give you one standard of garment another process will give you another standard of garment so standard reflects consensus of opinion about procedure application analysis now something which has taken a lot of time and then something has been produced let's say gold or diamond so that will be considered as top class standard now it can be standard 1 uh just like scotch scotch whisky so scotch whisky the least is 13 years something which has been produced in scotland and has been aged for at least 13 years can be called a scotch but well, that is level 1 scotch so you have let's say level 2 level 3 level 4 highest level will be let's say level 10 scotch now level 10 or standard 10 now standard 10 scotch means it has been age till let's say 50 years so what is the standard 12 years is let's say standard 1 15 years standard 2 20 years standard 3 so that's how you are setting the standard depending on the number of years the scotch has been aged we classify the different scotch as per those standards so that is let's say in terms of procedure now standards are periodically reviewed modified and or revised now why we do that let's say 50 years back a particular speed was great i mean it was considered a very high velocity today let's say 40 km per hour 40 km is very slow for today's times so the standards will have to be reviewed now when your motor bike can do a top speed of 40 km per hour then the kind of helmet that you use or you know in case you have an accident so the kind of helmet that you will be using during those times the strength of the helmet is going to be very less today you are traveling you know the top speeds are somewhere around 120 140 km per hour now if you have an accident at that velocity the type of helmet that you will require today has to be far more far stronger so therefore the standard for a good quality helmet is not the same as that it was you know 50 years back so that's why standards have to be reviewed they may have to be modified or they may have to be revised 